Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm going to talk about some thoughts. Uh, to be exact, it's about the topic of how to get your thinking or thoughts cleared, clarify your thoughts. So the topic or the subject is called Clarity, what to clarify. Okay, that's the topic. Okay. Uh, thought about this topic, I recently came upon some arguments uh, from friends. They uh, talk about the Chinese culture, Oriental culture in general. Uh, when I heard their talking, uh, I got the impression that how can they tolerate such ambiguous or self-contradictory statements or position, proposition as given? or they accept it, or they think that's correct, or they say that themselves. That worries me. And uh, related to this, I basically uh, thought about the analytical philosophy in the Western one, and uh, already that's a result. Uh, a lot of philosophers or the schools have achieved but uh, the Chinese don't understand it, apparently. And we can see that from the, the World Philosophy Meeting recently uh, they had, and a lot of uh, weird talks that really uh, have nothing to do with the, the Western philosophy in general, I believe. So, this is a origin of the idea, why do we want to clarify thoughts? Okay, first I want to uh, talk about the clarity of thinking in the East, especially in China. Uh, well, actually I believe that uh, in Buddhism, uh, the little I heard, uh, I haven't made a serious study about it because I never think that's a science or anything related uh, like the Western philosophy. They just uh, tolerate ambiguous or self-contradictory thoughts. That's not right. But in Chinese thinking, that's very obvious. And self-contradictory and bigger thoughts everywhere. And also they believe that's true. That should be okay. And that worries me. In general, from my studies, I realize the Chinese, since ancient times, they never ever distinguished subject from the object. Distinguished themselves from the world. They just don't have this idea. They never clearly draw a line between what I'm thinking, that's all to myself, and what the out there, the world actually is. They never had that idea, that clear distinction. Rather, they believe that whatever I think if I have my will, will be true. The world will follow whatever my, I'm thinking. And uh, when you become sort of a, a powerful person, like an emperor, you will do that way, right? And even some, we, we know the story called uh, pointing to a deer, say that's a horse. And they use that as a political trick to bully the enemy, you know. That's also true, too. But even nowadays, there's still no distinction. In the so-called law in China, there's nothing like you have to prove what you said or something. They have barely 
that idea. Mostly, it depends on the whatever the upper, the powerful, the bureaucracy think that should be the case. They decide case on that, on thinking, on subject thinking, on their ideas, on their wills, not according to the facts or evidence. They don't have this idea. So, from ancient time, they don't separate the subjects from the objects. They don't separate myself, my thinking, from the reality of the world. They never had this idea. Till nowadays, they still limited. Uh, they don't, uh, I don't know. They, they don't understand it, or either they don't want to, but anyway. The tradition is in their culture, in Chinese culture. They don't have that idea of separation. So till now, nowadays, even the uh, intellectuals, according to the Western tradition, the scholars who know the Western ideas still have this problem. What they are thinking, what the world is, so they really there's a long way to go for them, for the Chinese scholars to reach the level of Western scholars in analysis. Uh, second, I want to talk about the clarity of language in the West. You know, the Western culture or the Western philosophy specifically since the modern time, since the starter, uh, the French Descartes, the analytical thinking very clearly shows its power from that point on. How to analyze things, how to cut a uh, lump sum big problem into small manageable chunks of problems, then tackle each, solve it piece by piece, one by one. That's a basically the start of a scientific method. That's why science advanced so well in the past 500 years. Because of this trend of thinking, that's in philosophy call it analytical thinking, That is the way to go. But when the Western people, especially the philosophers, reflect on their old statements or saying or articles or books, they realize there are still some uh, not clear or some mix up of the object and the subject. They're still not quite a uh, separation, very refined separation of the things from the thoughts. So they invented this symbolic logic to make formal logic inherited from Aristotle into more detailed method or methodology if you will, to redefine the thinking, to get clear of the uh, thinking, to separate the reality from the truth, uh, to separate the reality from thinking. You know, that's the way to go. That's called analytical thinking. So everybody should have a clear mind. Actually, this is correct because in the two-dimension or three-dimensional world we have, right? That's uh, space and the time, the length, the longitude, the attitude, and uh, in this world, the time and the temporal spatial time, spatial. Uh, dimension, we do have a clear definition or cut 
of each quality or each essence of things from the, another one, right? That's the way we, what we do. In that way, because we have a clear idea, so we can go into very detail to make it uh, better, to clarify what it is, to realize what it is, and to change it, or to do whatever we want it to. So that's uh, from the the benef benefit that's benefited from the analytical thinking from this trend started from Descartes ever since. And uh, later the Vienna School and uh, the the language analysis like uh, Wittgenstein and uh, Rondi. They all follow this trend, push it to the end. Even to, till the French modern philosopher, uh, Derrida, it's like that. Language analysis, text analysis, breaking down the problem, find the ambiguity, find whatever not clearly said and should be clearly said. They always stress that way. All right? So this is the second level. So first one is the thought. In Eastern thinking, there's no separation. So not clear on that level, on the thought, the subject side. And the second level is on the language side. That's mostly embodied by the Western thinkers. How to clear, clarify the language, to use the language. Well. All right, the last one is the clarity of the world. So this has come to this thinking. Is the, cl the world really clear? As clear as we wish to? Well, the truth is, it turns out not as we like to get it cut into no matter how small a pe the pieces are. It's not like that. We know that. The Newtonian physics can clear cut things. Even the Einstein's relativity theory can still have a cut of the world. But when we come to the quantum mechanics, there's no more division, no more clear cut of the small things. In other words, when we reach to a certain extent, go into deep enough of the nature of the elements, atoms, elements, the nutrients, the atoms, the smaller things, it's no longer cuttable. It's no longer separable. You know, we, we know the, uh, the two uh, features of the elements, the basic elements, right? And they can show the wave function. They can also show the, like, uh, how can I say, the point or bullets, like that. The dual nature of elements. That's for sure. So to a certain extent, we cannot cut anymore. That's the reality. So clarify things. The clarity of things, to that extent, you cannot go any further. But there is a difference. The world is not, cannot be separated clearly. It doesn't mean when we say it, we have to say it unclearly, right? We have to clearly say that it cannot be cleared anymore. We have to make sure the two things are different. We have to know what we mean by who is not clear. Is that our thinking? Is that our language? Or is that our world? We have to have that distinction very clearly spelled out before we can proceed. So that's uh, today's topic. I hope uh, you can get some idea of what I meant and also help you to uh, clarify your own thoughts. And uh, that's... Uh, benefit we inherited from the analytical school of philosophy in the past 200 years. All right, thank you for listening.